Hello, I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. Do you know someone who whips up amazing dishes in the kitchen? You can make this quick and easy greeting card using my free pattern available in SVG for electric cutting machines or in PDF for hand cutting. Now before we get into the demo, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of new tutorials. Now let's get started. There are two apron pieces and the back piece has the perforated line along the top. Take a 5 inch piece of ribbon and glue it above the perforation line. Glue the top on to hide the ends, making sure to match up the edges. For this card, I'm making it for my nephew who came over and made pasta with me one day. I was so impressed with his knife skills and honestly, he has more patience in the kitchen than I do. So I'm going to be decorating it with vinyl on top and if you've never used transfer film with your vinyl, you're going to love this demo. You can buy clear film and pick up your weeded items, hover over your work area before deciding where it goes, or better yet, put it back on the wax backing, confirm the position, then apply and then slide out the wax. And if you're wondering how come the vinyl doesn't get stuck to here and why is it that this vinyl here stays on here? And I asked that same question actually. It's because the tactile strength of this is weaker than this. That's why when I go to peel this up, it's not going to damage my black cardstock and yet this will be released. And I noticed that it's easier to release if you, you know, use something like this card and it helps like finer pieces stay down. And that's the beauty of transfer film. Since I'm giving this pasta card to my nephew, I kept it quite plain and simple, but I did want to highlight it with some simple stitching. I decided to use some metallic pens to ensure they show up against the black cardstock. Now, if you don't have a cutting machine, I'll show you what you can do by hand. But before you do, I just want to say thank you to everyone for supporting me by leaving me a comment. It really means the world to me, literally, because it's always just me in my craft room. So when I hear from you what you thought of the project, how it was to make, who you gave it to, and how they reacted, that is what makes all this worth it to me. So if you're making this card by hand, I would suggest that you print the pattern on the back side of the sheet rather than the front. This way, if there's any of the black toner that's left on your trim, you flip it over and no one's going to see that. And if you happen to still see it on your apron part and you're worried about it when people are opening up the card, then just do it a little bit more inside of that line as you're doing your cutting. Now, I want to add a little bit of ribbon on the front to just basically add some other interest or color and, you know, the thing is with the ribbon, if you notice here, the glue goes right through the ribbon. You don't want to see that on the front. It's okay here because we're covering that up, but on the front, I would suggest that you use something like double-sided tape. And this one just happens to be a little bit skinnier than the ribbon I've got, so it's just perfect. So I'll be applying that with double-sided tape and I don't have to worry about the glue showing through. Another little trick that I do is ink the edges of my simple cards. So you can see this side here has no ink on it and this side does. It just kind of gives it a little dimension and so it helps you define the edges. You can see this pocket here, it just kind of blends right into the card, but you can see where I've inked the edges and it helps it kind of stand out in relief that way. So to do that, I just simply brush the edge of the ink pad against the edge of the card and we're not pressing right onto the card we're basically just going at an angle and just kind of brushing it a little bit so we're giving a bit of definition right on the edge and it's almost like somebody took an airbrusher to it it's kind of fun that way right so you can see how that pocket stands right out now and i have another little trick for you Here's a scrap piece of card and I didn't want to, well actually I couldn't, 
print out this whole printout on such a small sheet of paper. So I'm just going to use this as a guideline for me to, to trace along as I cut with a pair of scissors. And well, you guys might not know how frugal I am. I don't like to waste anything. And yes, of course, I could cut the spoon on this part of the cardstock, but since this part already has a hole in it, I want to position the spoon so it's right about here so it takes up as little of this you know scrap piece of card as possible because I just might need a sheet that's this big in the future and if I were to cut it out of here well it cuts into my scrap stock so you know how do you figure out where this thing is positioned if you actually go to a sunny window and put it behind you can actually see exactly where it lines up and see where the hole is so that you don't end up you know cutting the wrong part of the spoon out of that hole now you might go ahead and just start cutting away but actually if you were to take a stapler and staple right on the edge and that is going to help everything stay together and secure as you go along and cut with your scissors and it won't misalign and things and it'll help cutting a lot easier. Okay, give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it two thumbs up or leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you.